a balloon of total mass 460 kilograms is descending with a constant acceleration of 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Find the up thrust acting on the balloon. When the balloon is moving at 1.6 meters per second, enough ballast is released for the balloon to forward a deceleration of 0 0.3 meters per second squared. Assuming the up thrust remains the same, calculate how much ballast is released and the time for which the balloon continues to fall before it begins to rise. Okay, so important is to draw a force diagram. We only need to really consider one object. So we're going to take downward as positive. So this will be like the balloon. So the forces we have on there, we know that's 460 kilograms. So we know that we have 460 G acting downwards and then an up thrust of u upwards. Now the acceleration in the first part is acting downwards, so a will be 0 0.5 meters per second squared, so the arrows are going downwards. If you're going to uh, take upwards as positive, then that you'd have to consider that to be negative. So using Newton's uh, second law, and as we're taking downwards as positive, we need to do this one, minus this one so 460 g minus u will be equal to ma so it's 460 times 0 0.5 now if you do it the other way around you need to do u minus 460 g is equal to 460 times minus 0 0.5 and that will give exactly the same answer for the up for us so rearranging that you're going to get that u is 460 g minus 460 times 0 0.5 we take uh, g to be 9.8 meters per second squared, so that will give a value of u as 4,278 newtons. So in the second case, we don't know the mass. We've got a new mass, but we've got the, the thrust acting outwards, which is the same as part A, so that's now 4,278 newtons. We've got an mg acting downwards. So what we'll do, we'll calculate the mass here and then subtract it from 460, then that will tell us how much ballast has been um, lost. Now, uh, we have uh, downwards again as positive, but we've got an acceleration going upwards this time because we're told it's decelerating. So if we are uh, going to take uh, positive as downwards, then we need to do mg minus 4,278 is equal to the mass and we need to now make the acceleration negative because it's acting upwards. If we did it the other way around, then we need to do this one minus this one, and this time we would take that to be positive. So it doesn't really matter which way around you do it, you just need to take into account uh, which way you're acting as, down, uh, as positive. So as I'm doing downward as positive, it's this one minus this one is equal to MA. So working with that to find M, so you get mg, if we move this to the other side, it will become plus m times 0 0.3 is equal to 4,278. m is a common factor, so we've got m times g plus 0 0.3 is equal to 4,278. And therefore m will be 4,278 divided by g plus 0 0.3, which is 423.56 kilograms. The ballast will be the original mass, which is 460, minus this. So the ballast released will be 36.4 kilograms to three significant figures. So the last part, what's going to happen is it's going to go downwards and then go back up, up again. So we've got V will be zero. That will be the point where the uh, motion changes to go upwards. The initial velocity, we're told in the question, is 1.6. And the acceleration is negative because we're taking downward as positive. Again, if you were going to do it the other way around, that would have to be positive and that would have to be uh, negative. You're going to take upwards as positive. So, so you've got V is equal to U plus AT. So you're going to have that 0 is equal to 1.6 minus 0 0.5 T, which means that T will be minus 1.6 divided by 0 0.3. T would have to come out to be positive because we haven't yet learned how to go back in time. So T is equal to 5 and 1 third second. Okay, this has been a video to show you how to 
calculate the ballast released by balloon. I uh, hope you've understood the problem and I thank you very much for watching.